Right? So this is where all that like T cell shit comes into play. Right? I, I feel where he is. I don't need to look at him. It's the frame like this. You see how I broke his structure? So once he's off balance, I'm just gonna just make it ugly and just hug him. Ah, fuck this, time this. Like this is not gonna happen. Like he's gonna be fighting me. He's gonna be punching me. Really, the reality is this is happening. This is happening, right? And then fuck is this. Okay, boom, right? Boom, like that. <laughs> What's up guys? Okay, so in this video series, uh, I'm, for the first time, I'm gonna really break down and show you guys like how I clinch. It's basically split down in three stages, okay? I wanna enter the clinch, I wanna control the clinch, and then either I wanna finish in the clinch or I wanna exit the clinch. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna mix in some of my Wing Chun with the Muay Thai. Um, so, you know, I already know Muay Thai, I've been doing it since like 2010. So it's not like a real secret, everybody does Muay Thai. I'm not gonna really like go through all the basics of like Muay Thai, there's a lot of content already out there talking about that. Me here, my job here right now in this video is I wanna show you guys some stuff that other people are not gonna show. They're not gonna talk about this kind of stuff. Why? I'll tell you why. Because guys that train TMAs, Okay, guys that train like karate, taekwondo, wing chun, literally whatever other style, right? They don't then practice it in sparring. They just like kind of like train static like this. Like, oh, you do this, I do that. It's like, okay, we know, like fighters know, when you go and fight somebody, it's in a live environment. It's in a live pressure testing environment. He can throw boxing jabs at me. He can throw hooks at me. He can shoot takedowns on me. This is not going to work. If I'm, if I'm doing static stuff like this, my chin is up in the air, my legs are there, He's just gonna do whatever he's gonna do to me. So that's like what 90% of the people that do TMAs, they just have static training. They're just doing this, 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 and they do that for like 30 years, guys. You, you guys doing static training for 30 years, like if you enjoy doing that, that's fine, that's your thing. I'm not here to tell you like, hey, don't train that way. If that makes you happy and, and that's your goal, great, train it that way. But for me, you know, me with Dicey MMA, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you guys all the martial arts that work, all the martial arts that are effective, and all of the techniques that other people don't do because they don't apply their techniques. And the moment that you start applying their techniques, things evolve, things change, and then you actually get the stuff that works at the other end of the equation. I want to break this down to three steps, okay? One, how do I enter the clinch? There's a, there's a, there's a thousand ways, okay? But really, I'm going to just try to be basic, okay? First of all, I'm gonna use my longest range weapon, okay? You hear Bruce Lee talk about this all the time, my longest range weapon, sidekick, okay? But really, I'm not really trying to sidekick him, it's okay, right? I can do like front kick, right? But really what I am doing is I'm pushing him back, creating the distance, right? Maybe I'm grabbing his hand, whatever, I'm pulling him in, whatever, right? I'm creating this distance and then I wanna enter. Once I do make the, the, the moment of commitment that I wanna enter, first of all, I wanna make sure my chin's low. I want to make sure my hands are in front of my face so I don't get popped on the way in, I don't get punched on the way in, right? Like maybe I have to eat a shot to come in, fine, whatever. Okay, so the, the, the way I enter, right, create the distance, create the distance, get them distracted, then I'm going to enter the clinch, okay? So this is uh, another term for it is called what? Tom right? It's like I'm seeking the bridge. What, what, what was the bridge? Bridge arm is here. Bridge arm, bridge arm, okay? But really that's just, just you know, terminologies, right? In reality, really I'm trying to get into his center. I'm trying to get into a structure. I'm trying, I want to break the structure. I want to start controlling the structure. How do I control the structure? Right? Muay Thai style, okay? I want to get my elbows in nice and tight and close. And my, my forearms is right next to his neck. I want to take my hand, I want to palm it at the back of his head like this, okay? Sometimes maybe on like, like right up at the top here, right? Maybe not really at the back of his neck here is not strong enough. I really want to like bend the top of his head. That way I break his structure down. Okay, so even if I got one hand and I got one palm, right? I got him under control. So if he tries to get out, like I still have one hand. Okay, now I add two hands. Two hands, palm, back of his head. Now I can throw knees, throw knees, okay? Let's say he does, uh, tries and fights back. He does it and pummels, tries to try to grab a hold of my neck. Okay, here's where we start fighting, in the clinch range. Now we're in the actual clinch. In the actual clinch, Couple techniques, okay? One, I wanna keep my back straight, spine straight. Some people advocate like tippy toes. I don't really advocate for tippy toes because you can get sweat, okay? So if you try to get up on your toes, right, like this, I can just sweep you. I can sweep them like that, you see that? So I don't, I don't really advocate for tippy toes. 
I want to have a strong base instead. I want to have a strong spine. I want to make sure my back's straight, but not so straight where he can then shoot in for a takedown. Like if you got shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's bad too. So it's really like this balance of like in and out, rooting, not rooting. Really, I need to feel where his energy is and then I'm going to determine it. Well, I'm going to determine where he's going to go, right? So this is where all that like t cell shit comes into play, right? I, I feel where he is. I don't need to look at him. I feel where his energy is and I can take the clinch here, okay? Now that we're fighting in the clinch, really our objective is to have control over each other. So either I get double tie plumb like this or he does it, double tie plumb like this, get this bad for me. So if I get into this position, how am I, how am I getting out of here, okay? So number one thing, okay? Yeah, there's two ways to control it. Either I control his hips or I control his head, okay? So I'll just show you one way. If I need to get out of this, I, I, I'm gonna choose to control his head, okay? So I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna brush his chin on the outside, I'm gonna brush it like this. Why am I brushing it this way, why? Because I move his head to the other direction, so then his center of gravity is not on me, okay? Now, his center of gravity is, is pointing the other way, okay? So his arm's trapped here, right? So now, I can do like whatever I want. I can break out of this, I can throw my own knee, right? I can re-pummel, re-clinch, and now I have the advantage, because I just swam up, I got his head, right? So if he, he has his head under me, right? Head right here. Elbow squeezed in, palm on top of my head, right? Like this, right? So one way is the frame like this. You see how I broke his structure? I'll just do it again, okay? Like this. I can either go under his throat, right? And frame up like this, okay? Or I could push his chin, okay? Boom, push his chin, okay? So two ways, okay? Now let's say he's super strong. He's super duper duper strong. I can't just, I can't just frame my arm on his hand like this. It's too strong, okay? So I'm gonna focus on, the hip, on his hips, his spine, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna kick my hip slip right in, right? Once I have my hips at the same level as his hips, I'm gonna grab a hold of the spine and I'm just gonna swim up like this. I'm gonna put a hold onto him, put a hold onto him, swim up, and then I'm gonna knee, knee him back in the face. So two ways, again, boom, right? Hands behind my head like this. If I can't brush him on the chin, I can't push it, he's too strong. I can't frame, he's too strong, right? I wanna literally like reach out, touch him in the hips, okay? I wanna like grab a hold of him, squeeze him into me, and put my head above his head. Then I can just swim up, clinch, boom. Okay, then I counterattack in the clinch. So part three, how to exit. So if I'm from here, we're fighting, whatever, punching, being, right? A couple ways I wanna exit, okay? I probably either wanna take him down, sweep him, or just like literally disengage. So a couple ways I like to do it, pretty simple, okay? From here, he's got his hands wrapped around like this. If I can, so that doesn't always work. I mean, it depends how strong he is. If I can, I'm gonna wait until the moment where like, let's say he throws a knee at me or like he's, he's doing something, right? Like he either throws a knee up or whatever, he's off balance. I'm just gonna foot sweep him, okay? Either on the outside or here like this, okay? Do something like throw a knee or whatever, inside, okay? Something like that, okay? So I'm, I'm taking a moment where I'm exploiting him if he puts himself off balance. So sometimes I might just be holding. I'm just waiting for him to do something, right? So once he's off balance, I'm just gonna turn him and just switch people, okay? Or if he's really, really committed on the knees, I'm like dying here, I'm like getting need, and I have to just make it ugly and just hug him and just try and double leg him, right? It's gonna be ugly, like you're gonna eat some shots, but like, what are you gonna do? Like, it's a, it's a fight, right? Um, if he's not doing anything, I'm just gonna push him. Like from here, okay. If I can just push him, like disengage, like, oh. Hey, that's so simple, that's so easy. Well, sometimes that's just easy works. If he's not doing anything, punch him, punch him. Okay, whatever, disengage. Fight resumes back here. To, to really break it down, you kind of see, like, if he's got the clinch on me here, there's another way to do it. I mean, this is a very classical way. It's like, oh, like this. I mean, it seems like it doesn't work, right? But really in reality, like really, if I'm like uprooting him, obviously if he's super strong, like I'm gonna have to try really, really hard. But really the theory is, if I can uproot his, uh, his spine, if I can uproot his, uh, his uh, structure here, then he can't, he can't clinch me. Obviously I have to have a stronger structure than him, right? If I'm all wobbly noodles, right, like this, I'm just getting tossed around, like it's not gonna work for me, right? But if I can keep my structure strong, and I can just uproot him, then I can get out that way too. So either I'm uprooting him, I'm going time, I'm spreading, 
or I'm doing fo, which is I'm compressing, I'm subduing. So this is uh, the time folk position right here. So this is the time position right here. If you guys are doing Wing Chun stuff, this is the folk position right here. Folk, right here, folk, folk, like sinking, 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 subduing. So really when, when, when guys are practicing their techniques, they're like, ah, folk this, time this, like this is not gonna happen. Like he's gonna be fighting me, he's gonna be punching me. Really the reality is this is happening. This is happening, right? And then folk is this. Okay, boom, right, boom, like that. Like that's the reality, okay guys? So you have to take the static and you gotta bring it into reality. Just like, just like you, you guys see me demo like the, the karate all the time. It's like, would I really stand like this? Try and punch a guy in the face like this? No, this is like how we train the kata. Boom, okay? In reality, boom, this is how I would apply, all right? Same thing guys, take care.